What's up, Warp community? Welcome to Warp News. This is Rich Spooler, and today I've got another Starlink satellite internet video for you. If you didn't see my first two videos, check out the links in the description down below to give those a view. In the first video, I do an unboxing, setup, and initial tests of the Starlink system the very day I received it. And in the second video, about two weeks later, I go through the five tips that I learned that give you the best out of your Starlink satellite internet. So in today's video, I'm going to be sharing with you an email that I got from the Starlink beta team with some updates that they are pushing through right now to improve the Starlink system. We're going to be covering things like upgrades to the app, connecting to the best satellite, thermal temperature control management, and of course, space lasers. So stay tuned as we go through these upgrades to the Starlink system. But before we get into that, I do want to take a few minutes to tell you about the upcoming Warp Space Summit. Uh, I'm going to put a link for that right down in the description of the video here, but I'm going to be hosting the Warp Space Summit on September 19th in Linköping, Sweden, and we are also going to be streaming it live on Hopin, and it's going to be a really, really exciting event, so I'd love for you to take a look at it. And at that website, you'll see that right now we've got some special deals going on. You can get a ticket uh, for a pretty reasonable price if you act fast. So head on over to warpspacesummit.org, get registered, you get a ticket to the summit, and 12 months as a Warp News premium supporter. We have already announced our first keynote speaker, Dr. Tanya Harrison on the Mars rover, and many other speakers who will be added to this list as the weeks go on. I will be hosting, I'll also be speaking on Starlink and my experiences as a beta customer over the past couple of months. So I really invite you to check this out. Hope you can join us digitally, or if you happen to be in the area of Linköping, Sweden, you can certainly join us in person on September the 19th. So let's move on to the email from the Starlink team. This went out to everybody in the beta test community earlier this week, and in it, they're talking about some updates that they're pushing through as they prepare to move closer and closer to exiting beta and into live production and full global coverage. So some of the things mentioned in this email are updates to the Starlink app, high temperature management, Connecting to the best satellite, which I think this is probably the most impactful one that uh, an individual can notice as it addresses how strong your dish's link is to the Starlink constellation. And of course, last but certainly not least is something called space lasers. How cool is that? So we're going to take a look and see what that means right now. All right, so let's unpack a few of these. And I was really happy to see some of these updates because in some of the previous videos I recorded, uh, several of these updates, upgrades, uh, were commonly mentioned in the comments, questions that people asked. Uh, if you haven't seen my last two videos, um, I did one video when the very first day I received my Starlink kit, I did an unboxing, a setup, and some initial speed tests and a, a very first day review. Uh, and then about two weeks later, uh, after some trial and error and, and moving the dish around on my roof to different spots and learning a few things, I recorded my five tips that I think will help you get the most out of your Starlink satellite internet. Uh, if you haven't seen those videos, I'm going to put a link for them in the description and also up here. Uh, or, or maybe here, I'm not sure which side YouTube likes to put it on, but one of these two spots uh, you can click to watch one of the previous videos if you missed them. But let's take a look at some of these and unpack them a little bit more. Space lasers. Wow, let's talk about space lasers. So space lasers, I had to read that twice when I first opened this email. What a, an amazing name for an upgrade. But these devices are going to allow the satellites to communicate with one another in space without the need for a ground station. Uh, that's really key in allowing Starlink to achieve global coverage. Uh, eliminating the need for a ground station is what's going to allow these satellites to communicate with each other for, say, crossing over an ocean um, or communicating in places where it would be oppressively expensive to build a ground station like the North Pole or in the middle of the Sahara Desert or someplace like that where a ground station would just be really impractical and expensive to, to build. So space lasers solve that. Number two, connecting to the best satellite. This was a really common uh, complaint, I guess, amongst Starlink users and also a pretty common question in some of my other videos 
about uh, downtime and the dish's ability to connect a strong signal to a satellite uh, with very, very minor obstructions, like a little, a couple of uh, leaves from a tree or a branch, or even like heavy, heavy cloud cover. So there's a number of Starlink satellites in the sky at any given point in time. And looking at the obstruction finder, you can sort of see the field of view that your dish has. The problem is, is it's going to be connected to one of those at a time. And as it has been up until now, essentially, is when it finds its satellite, it stays linked to that uh, until it goes out of the field of view. And then it finds the next satellite and you can see the dish move during this process. It's a pretty cool thing to watch. What this new feature is going to allow it to do is identify the best satellite at any given moment. So let's say you've got, I don't know, 15 or 20 satellites orbiting in your field of view and it's locked onto one, but maybe an obstruction gets in the way or cloud cover rolls in and that's no longer the best satellite. Your dish is now going to be able to identify the next best satellite and move in real time. So it's really going to improve uh, your signal consistency, your signal strength, and decrease your downtime by a lot. High temperature management. Uh, this one was a little bit of a surprise to me. I live in an area where it gets pretty hot in the summertime, frequently in the 90s Fahrenheit, uh, which results in roof temperatures really hot, well over 130 degrees on the surface of the roof. Um, my Starlink has never shut down due to thermal shutdown reasons. Um, but I can imagine if you live in, in really, really hot areas, the Southwest of the United States, maybe along the equator, uh, people are seeing this. They're seeing thermal shutdown errors and losing internet. So Starlink is addressing this. Uh, again, according to their email, they've initiated a series of software improvements that change how your Starlink responds to high temperatures. So thumbs up there. That should be good to help everybody uh, get uh, good, strong service, regardless of the climate that they live in. And Starlink app upgrades. So this was the final improvement. I like the Starlink app. I look at it almost daily. Um, it shows some really relevant, albeit kind of geeky statistics, uh, things like the quality of your connection. You've got a 12 hour history of your uptime and downtime uh, usage, upload and download usage, uh, signal to noise ratio, things like that. But Beyond that, the, the app is really not very practical. Um, so they're improving it. Uh, there are you know, some basic features right now, the ability to change your network name and password and WPA3 uh, security, separate control of 2.4 gigahertz and 5 gigahertz. Nothing super exciting, but at least it's some practical use cases for the app. And I imagine as beta continues to roll through and they go towards live production, they'll continue to make upgrades to the app as well. So thanks for watching. That covers uh, the updates that I got from this email from the Starlink team just this week. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to put them down below and I will get back to you as soon as I can. Thanks for watching. Make sure to give this video a thumbs up, subscribe to the Warp Institute channel. And again, check out that Warp Space Summit. It's going to be really exciting, a lot of fun. I'm looking forward to hosting it, traveling to Sweden and giving a talk about Starlink satellite internet. So thanks again. We'll see you guys next time for more from Warp News.